I had a terrible theater experience. Weird issues with the people there aside, you wouldn't believe some of that. I feel like they did a really good job with this overall. It may be more Wakanda Forever than a Black Panther sequel, but whether or not they should or shouldn't have recasted T'Challa no longer matters. The film goes with what it does, and it does so very well, while at times feeling a bit bloated and unfocused. But it's also riveting and very honoring of Chadwick Boseman. It does feel strange at first to relegate so much attention to side characters as co-leads, but in a way that's also refreshing. Letitia Wright and Angela Bassett especially carry the weight of this film. I'm quite astounded by the powerhouse performances and character arcs displayed by them here. The story is a natural follow-up to the first, organically introducing Namor and Talokan, since they can't quite call it Atlantis, I guess. He's a really great villain. It's cool to see his backstory, but I can't help and feel like we needed more of him. There's so much going on that it seems like Namor's plight is a little lost in the proceedings, but it's still got awesome world building and I always love the Submariner. Whenever he's on screen, it magnifies the experience, but I just wish we'd had more of him. Various plot elements get glossed over pretty quickly with things being either extremely convenient and easy, rushed through, or somewhat unnecessary. An example of the latter is Everett Ross's role in the film. <laughs> Mr. Bilbo Baggins, the Tolkien white guy, <laughs> he's there to connect the universe more than to serve the plot, it ultimately feels like those scenes could have been cut entirely to shave time off the movie. It's a long one, but the pacing didn't really bother me. I can just tell where cuts could have been made to allow room for other characters or Riri Williams to shine. Speaking of, Ironheart, who isn't really allowed to grow within the film as much as she should have, more like a plot device set up for a spinoff, and she's getting one, so that's exactly what she is. That doesn't mean she's not likable, there's just not as much depth there as I was hoping for because there's just so much going on. There's a worldwide political conflict that grabs attention from the beginning, but largely disappears, which was unfortunate because there's a few plot threads like that, but that one especially was really compelling. And as I mentioned at the beginning, there's a long stretch where it feels more like a movie titled Wakanda Forever than Black Panther. But what I respect so much about this is when the Panther does show up, it feels earned. There's lots of surprises and some very bold decisions within the story that the film remarkably doesn't feel safe but a brave step forward through tragedy. It doesn't beat you over the head, but wisely uses the honest, grieving performances of the actors to push their characters and arcs forward. Substantial change and growth happens, and that's not for nothing. The ending really, truly celebrates Chadwick Boseman and the character of T'Challa in a proper way, and that it's okay to have mourned, but the mourning can be over to go forward, even if he will always be remembered and honored through a legacy that he has shared with all these characters and actors. Especially with that fantastic mid credit scene. I also appreciate that Ryan Coogler really stepped it up with his visuals, but in the first one, some of the action sequences were quite lacking, even if they were ambitious, and the visual effects were, I think, pretty much unanimously agreed on to be one of the weaker uh, elements of the MCU, but the CGI is much better here. The staging of the action is much better for the most part. There are a few scenes, like there's a fight on a bridge that is incredible. And then there's fights later that just don't capture the scope as much as they should have, such as a final battle that probably doesn't have the best strategy that Wakanda has ever used for being so advanced. But all in all, it's, it is a step up there and there's some fantastic cinematography in here. Kugler is very ambitious and I think he's gonna be one of the best directors in a few years. He's working his way up and I'm very impressed by how he handled the difficulty surrounding this film and still told such a thought-provoking, moving, emotional story that covered so much ground, even if it's a little bit bloated. And I won't hold this against the film, but I had a terrible theater experience. Weird issues with the people there aside, you won't believe some of that, I won't get into it, but the projector bulb was so dim, it gave the bleakest image I think I've ever seen in the theater. I couldn't tell anything that was going on in night times. It's not being factored into the score, but it definitely affected my enthusiasm. So I'd like to see it again for that reason. It just is unfortunate when your theater doesn't help a film live up to the hype. Lastly, I was just extremely nervous going into this and somehow they pulled it off. Chadwick Boseman has been honored. Black Panther lives on and Wakanda truly is forever. I'm excited for the opportunities this film opened up for the MCU, its bravery and its themes. Said thematic messaging isn't as resonant or hammered home as hard as the first film hits with its poignancy, but it's moving and thought provoking nonetheless. While sometimes a bit bloated and unfocused, this is one of the most emotionally mature Marvel movies to date. You'll laugh, cheer, and probably tear up at the legacy being celebrated on screen. I give Black Panther Wakanda forever four out of five stars. Thanks so much for watching. You should subscribe right now below and remember, 
always look for the good.